Ukraine Today is joined by the president of the Ukrainian Catholic University and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Bishop of Paris, His Excellency Boris Gudziak. Your Excellency, welcome to Ukraine Today. Vladimir, thank you for your hospitality. Um, Your Excellency, a, a few weeks ago, um, uh, Pope Francis had a meeting with President Putin during uh, pre Russian President's visit to Italy. Uh, there were several significant moments during this meeting, the first and foremost of which was that President Putin was more than an hour late for the meeting. And according to the reports, during the meeting itself, Pope was very cold with Russian President and gave him a medallion of peace. Do you think that this, by, by giving this medallion, uh, the Pope, in his diplomatic, subtle way, was trying to tell President Putin to stop the aggression of Ukraine and get out of eastern Ukraine? Uh, the Holy Father has surprised the world uh, regularly in uh, uh, these few years of his service. And I think it shouldn't be any surprise that he is trying to meet uh, world leaders uh, who are connected with problems uh, in the world. Uh, the meeting was significant uh, in the eyes of some paradoxical. Uh, some people in Ukraine were concerned, why is the Pope meeting with Vladimir Putin? Others uh, interpreted, I think, in a, in a mistaken way, uh, the gesture of the gift. Uh, Pope Francis is fundamentally a man of peace. And there should be no question uh, about the fact that he is uh, sanguine. He is aware. He knows exactly who started the war, who is uh, funding it, uh, where the armaments are coming from. Uh, the, the propaganda around uh, the Russian aggression is not fooling anyone. However, the Holy See needs to maintain diplomatic ties with uh, the entire world. There are many Catholics in Russia who are under pressure. And so uh, the diplomatic of language and gestures of the Pope and the Papal Diplomatic Service are never explicitly political. Um, the Pope waited and the first word a welcome was precisely one word, in German, willkommen, uh, without great um, smiles or a particular uh, chit-chat. Uh, pictures were taken. Uh, it was clear to the, the photographers uh, that uh, the scene was uh, rather frigid. Uh, afterwards, there was a private meeting, and we don't know the details of that. But at the end, the Pope did give not a medal of peace, but a medallion uh, of a <clears throat> symbol of peace, clearly encouraging uh, Vladimir Putin to finally embrace peace. And it was not a great day for the Russian president. Uh, on that day, the European Parliament, uh, uh, the Italian Parliament voted for Ukraine uh, to ratify the association agreement of Ukraine uh, with the European community. And um, his nonchalant manner in arriving late, uh, and I think the conversation that was quite clear, uh, uh, that was uh, behind closed doors, uh, was a bit of a cold shower. Your Excellency, back in April, we were talking to the leader of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, um, his Beatitude, Svetoslav Shevchuk. And during this meeting, um, Svetoslav Shevchuk told us that during his meeting with the Pope, uh, Pope Francis told him that he's the friend of Ukraine, that he's with Ukraine, and that he feels for the pain of the Ukrainians, which, which are now suffering uh, throughout the entire country. And so do you think that following the meeting with with, with President Putin, uh, President Putin got the message from, from, from the Pope that this meeting was, could be yet another step to, to bring peace to Ukraine, or do you think that nothing at all can stop President Putin? The Pope is today one of the biggest, uh, the, the highest moral authorities in the world. Did his words impact uh, Volodymyr Putin? Well, it doesn't seem that uh, the president of Russia today listens to the word of God 
And the question is, will he listen to the word of the Pope? Uh, we don't know. Uh, but I think the Pope is making uh, his best effort. He did so in that uh, conversation. And uh, we people of faith, uh, we believe that um, the presidents and potentates of this world are not all powerful. Uh, the Lord is at work in this history. Ukrainians have seen, shown in the past years that their struggle for dignity which seems so improbable, so impossible, in fact, is advancing. And I hope with God's help, Ukrainians can be patient, resilient, continue to demonstrate fortitude, and continue to, um, let's say, gain the support of Catholics, of people of faith, and of all people of goodwill. Ukraine is the only country in the world which voluntarily gave up its nuclear arsenal. And now when Ukraine is under the threat of another nuclear country, do you think that the entire world has a moral obligation to stand up for Ukraine and help it defend itself? Not only is there a very strong moral argument, it's very clear uh, who the aggressor is, who the victim is, and that this is a completely senseless war. Uh, but there is also the self-interest of uh, the countries of the world community. If Ukraine gave up its nuclear arsenal based on guarantees of its territorial integrity, guarantees made by the United States, Great Britain, uh, the Russian Federation, how can the world in the future negotiate about nuclear reduction let's say with North Korea or Iran, if the guarantees of the past weren't maintained. Today, the leadership of Iran, of uh, North Korea, of other uh, countries aspiring or already possessing nuclear arms can easily say, you know, your guarantees aren't worth the paper they're written on. So this precedent in which such uh, explicit guarantees made for a precedent setting gesture by Ukraine, the first country to disarm uh, its nuclear arsenal, uh, is quite alarming. And it is a blow at uh, the heart of the system of international relations and international diplomacy. Your Excellency, you are the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Bishop of Paris, and um, a lot of Ukrainians um, are criticizing France for not making enough uh, in this uh, war uh, to, to support Ukraine, to pressure more Russia, even though President Hollande is one of the, um, the members of, of the Normandy group to, to, to discuss the Ukrainian crisis. What are you hearing from, from your friends and from your partners in Paris to, in this respect? The awareness of Ukraine, the issues in Ukraine, has changed dramatically, particularly in France. No longer do people draw those maps along the Dnipro River and uh, arguing that the East is against the West. No longer are people are saying, saying that Russian-speaking Ukrainians do not uh, support the independence of Ukraine. Uh, these verities, uh, these truths about the nature of the issue of Ukraine are becoming more and more part of the consciousness, uh, not only of political leaders, but uh, general populations. It's taking time. And that is why I think the patience and endurance of Ukrainians is so important. We also must un understand in Ukraine that nobody in the end will solve our problems. Vladimir Putin is a great problem. The war that he is leading against Ukraine is a terrible burden. However, maybe problem number one is the corruption in our country. And we can do something about that. We can do more about that, not waiting for the reaction or position of France, uh, Germany, uh, or the international community. And this is what I, at this conversation, uh, I, in the church, is holding with our faithful, uh, with uh, civic society, and it's a joy to see young people like you, uh, your friends and uh, your generation that is really beginning to change this country fundamentally. We will continue our interview with Bishop Boris Gudzak next week. And now back to the news on Ukraine Today.